Welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jack Ford. We begin tonight with the unprecedented battle over the future of the Supreme Court. As of the time of this taping, the Senate Judiciary Committee is expected to vote along strict partisan lines to move forward Judge Brett Kavanaugh's nomination for a seat on the highest court in the land. That vote would send Judge Kavanaugh's embattled nomination to the full Senate for a historic vote that could change the shape of the court for decades to come. And all eyes now turn to a handful of key senators who may remain undecided. This, of course, all coming fast on the heels of yesterday's emotional testimony on Capitol Hill, at the end marked by bitter partisan accusations. At stake now appears to be not just the future of the court, but of a deeply divided country split along political lines. Joining me now to talk about all of this, Jamie Floyd, legal analyst and host of WNYC's All Things Considered, and Sam Nunberg, political advisor to Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. So welcome to both of you. We have a lot to talk about, a lot took place. Let me start first with the process. All right, I'll get to the, the people involved in a moment, but let's start for, first with the process. And, and Jamie, to you first, this notion of, of bringing in a, a, an independent lawyer, independent in the sense that not connected with the Senate, to do the question. I want you both to weigh in, but Jamie, I'll start with you first. What do you think about that? Well, entirely unprecedented. Never happened before. And I, I was rather uncomfortable with it. I certainly understand why the Republican senators wanted to do that. They didn't want to appear to be attacking this alleged victim, this woman, in the midst of the Me Too moment. And so I'm not sure that they had any alternative. But if she's going to testify, I think she had a right to be questioned by the senators themselves. Now, she certainly was willing to answer this woman's questions. Now, for the the sex crimes prosecutor herself, uh, it was a very awkward process. Every five minutes, she was interrupted. She couldn't get a flow going. Mm -hmm. uh, and you and I tried cases. And, yeah. when you, and you know whether you're a prosecutor or a defense attorney a or real, the civil trial, you want to create a, a flow. A real narrative, a real right. cross-examination. Yeah. Or, or in this case, she really wanted to have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with yeah. this woman, though she was trying to poke some holes in right. her, her story. Uh, she never really could yeah. uh, get that conversation going. So I don't know that it worked for her. I don't know that it worked for the senators. I don't know that it worked uh, for the narrative they were trying to make with the American people. But I don't know that it mattered because everyone kind of had uh, their heels dug yeah. in on one side or the we'll other. We'll talk about that. Sam, what do you think? From the perspective of the Republican senators, mm -hmm. as Jamie said, they did not want to get tagged with the same level that the senators got tagged with as a consequence of Anita Hill. Right. Um, Jamie, you covered that, I covered that, and you know mm -hmm. how that played out. What, were they successful doing it that way, do you think? Yeah, I think so. Look, I watched the Anita Hill hearing, and I couldn't believe some of the questions in hindsight that were asked to her, or even asked to Clarence Thomas after he appeared after her testimony. Uh, they took this, I thought this was the best way for them to do it from the point of view of they needed to get facts from her, for, from her story, from Dr. Ford's story. And what they did do afterwards was she uh, then, the questioner, she then uh, briefed all senators that were willing to go to the briefing and she explained to them, here is what I have, here is where I think some, here's what I can corroborate, here's what I don't corroborate, and here are some inconsistencies in Dr. Ford. I don't want to meddle in them, but there were some issues of some, of some issues that arose from the questioning. How about the, the talking about the process, mm -hmm. <laughs> how different, I, I described it as almost schizophrenic. The first session seemed fairly civil. There were pointed questions asked, but again, there was a civility and dignity to that. Though emotional. And, and emotional right. and, and very compelling. The second session, uh, which is now with Judge Kavanaugh, also emotional, also compelling, but it felt more like a political bar fight. Mm -hmm. right? uh, it, to, and, and Sam, you, you've been involved in that political right. arena. What, what, would you have advised the senators on both sides of the aisle to, to stage the second part the way they did, as, as confrontational as it was? Well, absolutely. I think that Judge Kavanaugh had to come out uh, with, and I believe it was true, with his righteous ignina indignation about this process and about what has happened here and the way that he has been uh, attacked, whether the charge, whether these charges are correct or not or accurate. And he was really working not, everybody said he was working for an audience of President Trump. He was not working for an audience of President Trump. Uh, 
so you know he's also working for an audience of the senators and also for the political uh, consequences of this nomination because the way this was heading I looked at this heading into the midterms that this was going to be a net plus for us in other words for Republicans in order to be able to keep the Senate had we not been able to confirm we would have had Trump voters stay home because they don't like either side they don't like Democrats they don't like Republicans they don't like the Republican Senate because they were unable to repeal Obamacare and if they could not get this other nominee through it would have been another strike against them. Let me ask you Jimmy ask you this this question and it, it, some people said went beyond the notion of defending himself and becoming a, a, a Trump Republican is well, what I well, heard. Well, there are two things going on. I agree he wasn't just playing to the audience of one, as many have suggested. He is playing to an audience of at least some senators. He knew there are senators in play, and I have to get those votes to seal the deal on this confirmation. So there was that for sure. And at some point in the afternoon, as you suggest, Jack, uh, there was a turn in the tone. Uh, and, and Lindsey Graham came out swinging. And then all of the senators decided we're going to dispense with this uh, independent voice we've brought into the room, and we're going to ask yeah, the, the questions here. just sitting there saying, okay, now what am I doing? Yeah, why it, am it, I It reminded here? me of the potted plant. It reminded yeah, me well, of Admiral Stockdale the, uh, at the mm -hmm. debate. Yeah, the comments in there on counter here is, am I just here a potted plant? The lawyer said that, and now she became sort of irrelevant. In a way, yes. I mean, maybe she was advising, but I didn't even see her doing that in the afternoon. And there's the second point that you make that I think now is critically important. Has he become a partisan? I mean, we know he was partisan on some level. He worked for George sure. W. Bush that's as his, staff that's, secretary. That's his he worked for Ken Starr uh, investigating President Clinton, and he alluded to that in his testimony. But in his first round of confirmation hearings, he was that judicial person, that temperament we expect to see in a judge. In the second round, he became a partisan. And I think more so than Clarence Thomas did in his second round. Of course, Clarence Thomas talked about the high-tech lynching. But he did, and he suggested that this was a conspiracy of the left. But this went far beyond what we saw in the Thomas hearings. Sam, now that, we've gone over the precipice because we're in this highly partisan moment, and we're also and in we, this Me Too moment. And we've, we've liked to believe that the U.S. Supreme Court was above partisan politics. No, not politics, because the, the process, the selection process, is political. Um, so, you know, we'd like to think, oh, it, it right. was never that, now it is. I'm not so sure that's the case. Now we know it is. I would argue, it is really it, I would argue but, that that train sale or that train went, but, went once once but, we had the but, Bork. But did this, yeah, because you okay. look and at the And certainly in Bush v. Gore. Right. right. But, but That's uh, would you be concerned now about the fact that if indeed Judge Kavanaugh is confirmed, it, we've now had the most, and, and the senator said this, and I think it's actually the most political Mm -hmm. Partisan political statements by a candidate for the Supreme Court that we've ever seen before. So, would you be concerned, the bigger picture, that now this is going to have an impact on the integrity of the court in some way? Uh, well, two separate uh, responses to that. The first is nothing in his judicial record. And remember, he has handed in more opinions than any other judge before him, at least in modern times as a nominee. Right. Nothing in his record shows that he is not independent. And in fact, something going for him, and one of the reasons the president nominated him was that in the second highest court of the land, the D.C. Circuit, he has had at least 13 opinions which have been used in the court. So he shows that he can build a consensus. Now, on the other point, look, I think people like me think that Gorsuch, something like this would have happened to Gorsuch, but for the fact that the Democrats never thought that the Republicans would actually break the filibuster rule. The Democrats never thought that they would be able to get 60 votes for Gorsuch, and they didn't realize that the Republicans were willing to do that. And because of the so-called Russia investigation, we call it the Russia cloud, they have been trying, and this is something that Kavanaugh touched on, you have had Schumer even say that the president should not be able to put a nominate anyone to the bench be, until this Russia investigation is over. Last question for both of you, real quick, if you would, for me. Have, has, has this now changed forever? 
how the process is going to play out when we're talking about seats on the U.S. Supreme Court. Real, real quickly for me. Yes, 100 percent. You're not going to have, when we have a Democrat president, and we will, and a Democrat president nominates a Supreme Court nominee, you will not have uh, 20 to 30 Republicans anymore, senators, voting, voting for that nominee. This has changed. They, um, they used to think, Republicans, we felt, which is one of the reasons Donald Trump got the nomination, that we played by a certain set of rules. They didn't. And we're not going to play by those rules anymore. You know, it reminds us of a quaint time not that long ago where the nominees didn't even appear in front of the committee. Right. Through, so do you think, Jamie, through, does throughout change our forever? History, throughout our history, going back to George Washington, we've had failed nominations. Eleven uh, withdrawn, starting with George Washington. He withdrew Rutledge. Uh, Eleven uh, that have been rejected by the Senate. And 15 that have just lapsed. Uh, including Merrick Garland. So, it, it, you know, history is helpful. It's encouraging. But I agree with you, Jack. We are now at an intersection of, you know, a critical history of the court that may now lose legitimacy because of this, despite the institutionalist John Roberts at the center of the court as mm -hmm. chief. The Me Too movement, which is a critically important factor here, uh, as well as this horribly, horribly partisan time we're living in. And that intersection uh, makes me uh, deeply concerned and troubled. Uh, i got to say, I'm, I'm always delighted when I get the two of you to come in and talk, because even if you're disagreeing, we do it in a rational and intelligent and a probing fashion. So, Sam, Jamie, always Thank a pleasure you. to see you, and I appreciate Thank you, your Jack, thoughts. We'll, we'll talk some more about the event.